Okay guys, welcome to this video looking at AS Pure Maths and it's looking at integration and specifically we are looking at indefinite integrals. So we're looking at integrals that don't have limits and we're not finding the area in this video. Okay, so this is like an introduction video for integration for specifically the form of the integral of x to the n dx or the integral of ax to the n dx okay so it's x to the power of a number okay um i will do a separate video on definite integrals and the integration of e to the x cos x sine x tan x all of those trig functions and all the other functions natural log of x okay etc etc Okay, but today's video is just like an introduction and explaining how we do like general integration for indefinite integrals. Okay, so I have got a few key words that I want you to note down here and make some notes from today's video. If this is completely new to you, it has been highly requested on my channel for a while. So I thought I'd make a video today on how to do integration. Okay, so guys, now integration, okay, in summary, is, is the opposite process of differentiation. Okay, so integration is all, is all to do with finding areas, okay, beneath or above curves. Okay, so, it's, so it's about finding areas above or beneath curves between two sets of values. Okay, now I've just mentioned in today's video, we're looking at indefinite integrals. What that just means is there are no limits here, so there are no numbers here, okay, for my integrals, okay, so we're looking what I call indefinite integrals for today, now I'm going to look at in a separate video what I mean by definite integrals and explain how to work out the area using integration, but that's the general purpose and the general overview of what integration is and why we do it, okay guys, so now looking at some notation, so this little like S symbol, that just means the integral of of a function so integral of dot 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 so integral of a function f of x g of x okay uh, p of x q of x okay with respect to x so dx just means with respect to x so i'm integrating this function with the letter so with respect to the letter x now generally speaking most a level textbooks look at the letter x but you can of course have other letters okay? so, so, so it's perfectly plausible to have the integral of y dy okay but make sure that when you're integrating that you are integrating with respect to that letter so obviously looking at more complicated examples which we'll look at later for like degree level maths here it might be looking at like partial integration okay or integration with with, with respect to like another letter okay so you for all purposes we are always integrating just that letter with respect to itself okay so hopefully it makes sense guys and sorry if i waffled on here or confused any of you Okay, now these set of integrals are what I call indefinite integrals because they have no limits. Okay, so I get like a generic answer, which is going to lead on to my next point, which is that when I integrate any function at the end, I've got to put a plus C, which is what, which is what I call the integration constant or the constant of integration. Now, the constant of integration is specifically only for indefinite integrals. If I have a definite integral, then there's no need for the plus C. So in a separate video, when I look at definite integrals and areas beneath curves okay from two sets of points okay then i don't need a plus c but for indefinite integrals i need a plus c so hopefully it's making sense guys and you're with me so far and apologies for talking a bit fast but feel free to rewind and rewatch any parts that you need to okay so they are the key notations guys from today's video in terms of okay 
the mathematical symbols okay for integration now looking at how we actually integrate in maths so the integral of a function in the form x to the power of n dx is x to the n plus one divided by n plus one plus an integration constant c so in short it just means that i add one to the power and divide by the new power and then plus the constant of integration c or any other letter that you choose to take okay? C, E, F, G, okay, etc, etc, okay, so in short, guys, so please copy this down, guys, into like your notepads, okay, for today's lesson as well, that the integral of a function in the form x to the n dx is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c okay so looking at question number one now so applying this formula for this example the integral of x dx now now i'm integrating x to the power of one okay i've got an invisible power of one there so adding one to the power and dividing by the new power i get x to the one plus one divided by one plus one plus c well one plus one we should all know is two okay so i get x squared over two plus c or i can even write it as a half x squared plus c okay so that is also plausible and fine in the exam okay or, or i can even write it as c plus x squared over two or c plus a half x squared that's also fine okay question number two guys the integral of x squared dx well adding one to the power and divided by the new power i get x cubed over three plus c so x cubed over three plus c okay or a third x cubed plus c guys okay so let's just copy that down guys into our notes okay so forgive me guys about the jerking on my um my filming so we're going to get x cubed over three plus an integration constant c guys okay so question number three the integral of 2x dx again imagine is 2x to the power of one okay so adding one to the power i get 2x squared over two plus c two divided by two so that just cancels so my answer is just x squared plus c guys and that one should say x cubed guys okay sorry about my handwriting there guys apologize okay question number four the integral of six dx so imagine it as six x to the power of zero because x to the power of zero is just one okay so i'm going to have six x to the 1 over 1 plus c well that's just going to disappear for that so i get 6x plus c question number five guys adding one to the power divided by the new power i get 7x to the 7 over 7 plus c the seven's going to cancel so i get x to the 7 plus c guys okay and i can check my answer by differentiating this okay so so i've done a video on differentiation back in july this year so feel free to click um the link i'll, I'll put a video yeah of differentiation in the link in the description to check it out guys but essentially you are able to check your answer by differentiating okay your answers and it will give you the um derivative okay so the inverse of a derivative is an integral question number six adding one to the power divided by the new power i get five x to the four over four plus an integration constant c okay question number seven is a bit more trickier i get minus x to the minus one because it's x so is x to the minus 1 divided by minus 1 plus c. Okay, divided by minus 1 just makes your answer negative. Okay, so I put the minus there. Or I can write it as minus 1 over x plus c. So that would also be plausible, guys, as well. 
Okay, question number eight, guys. The integral of x to the half dx. So adding one to the power, dividing by the new power. So I get x to the half plus one, divided by half plus one. Well, a half plus one is going to be three halves. Dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, which is two thirds. So the answer that you would get is two thirds x to the three halves plus plus an integration constant c, guys. Okay, and that's how I would work out my answers. Now, a last point to denote, guys, is I can't integrate, okay, this function if n is equal to minus 1, okay? And I want someone in the comments to tell me why can't I do that, okay? So, yeah, it is like an interesting reason into why I can't do that, okay, for that. So, let me know in the comments, okay, why I can't integrate the integral of x to the minus 1, okay? Because a problem happens when I use this formula for minus 1. Okay, right guys, that's the end of today's video on integration. So this is aimed at AS Pure Maths, okay, for year 12 students, and it's also appropriate for year 13 students as well, and also GCSE further math students as well. Okay, but it's predominantly aimed at A-level maths, okay? So just to summarize, guys, integration in the form AX to the N or X to the N DX, you add one to the power and divide by the new power, and then you put on your integration constant, your plus C, okay? If it has limits, then I don't need a plus C, okay? If it's not in the form X to the N, Okay, then I've got to use like a different rule actually, here and we'll come on to like the different functions that I can integrate, okay, for A-level math, okay. But the purpose of today was just to introduce you and get you to understand how integration works and what it means. But in theory, if it's in the form AX to the power of N DX, then I just add one to the power and divide by the new power and add on my constant of integration, so the plus C as always, okay. Okay, so hopefully it made sense, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. Thank you for tuning in to, to today's lesson. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please press like. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. And lastly, please click that bell icon so you are notified of my uploads for GCC and A-level maths. Okay, but that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy and I will see you all in my next video. Okay, bye for now.